Hey everybody and welcome to another piano review here at Miriam Pianos. My name is Stu Harrison and today we are looking at the W. Hoffman V112. It's part of their Vision series and of course part of the C. Beckstein overall family of pianos. It's a tiny piano but it packs a heck of a punch so I really hope that you'll stick around and learn all about this interesting little beast. Uh, we're going to be listening to it, we're going to be talking about its action, discussing its uh, structural components and how that contributes to its sound. Uh, so if it's the first time to the channel, we would really appreciate if you did hit the subscribe button. It'll let you stay up to date on everything we're doing here at the channel, which of course usually means more piano videos, which we'd love to see you back for. So without further delay, let's get started on the V112 right away. V112 is an interesting little beast. It is right at the bottom of the Beckstein Hoffman lineup and I don't say that in a pejorative kind of a term, it's just this is the smallest instrument uh, in their lowest price category line. Uh, so this is part of their Vision series which means the instrument is fully assembled in Europe and it has uh, essentially primarily European labor and European parts. There is the strung back, uh, which is coming from an alternate supplier uh, in China. I suspect it's probably Hai Loon because they already have an affiliation with Hai Loon with, with Zimmerman. Uh, Hai Loon makes a killer strung back, so I see that not as a bad thing, but probably is a, the, the reason why they're able to get the Vision series down a little bit. But after the strung back arrives, we're still talking about um, Beckstein assembly in terms of all of the labor fit and finish, all of the cabinetry. Uh, Beckstein hammers, as I mentioned in uh, virtually all of my Beckstein videos, uh, they're one of the few uh, European companies that actually has their own hammer division, which means the V112 actually has its own hammer design, meaning that it has been shaped, weighted, um, felted, and voiced uh, specifically to make the most optimal tone production out of the V112. Um, but I think this instrument offers a tremendous value and, and we tend to be very picky when it comes to what uh, models uh, we carry from any of the brands uh, that we represent in the store because we really only like uh, to show instruments and we really only like to get excited about instruments that personally excite us. And the V112 fits into that category. And here's what, to me, makes this such an interesting piano. It's exactly the same price point as what you're going to pay for your 51, your, your sort of, uh, your uh, first tier of 51, 52 inch pianos from Japan, from Yamaha or from Kawai. So this is priced right alongside what you might expect to pay for like a K500 or a Yamaha U3. Uh, but this is a 44, 45 inch instrument. So what's the argument or what makes this such an interesting um, option to go with a shorter piano besides just the, the kind of the cachet of being able to say that it's a European piano? Well, quite a bit. For one, Sitka spruce or Western BC or Western Alaskan spruce does have a different character of tone than a European Austrian white spruce. And the Vision 112 has that Austrian white spruce. It tends to have a better sustain. It also tends to have a much cleaner harmonic in terms of the upper harmonic of the instrument. And so for people who are looking for a really gorgeous bell-like tone, um, and they're willing to sacrifice a little bit of warmth for the clarity, this is an excellent alternative to looking at the Yamaha or the Kawhi in that same price range. It's just beautiful through the mid-range. So there may not be quite the same lower mid uh, projection that you would get out of say a K500, but the attack and the bloom that you're getting out of that, uh, especially in a lower dynamic range, is something that you would normally expect to pay 
well up closer to the $20,000 range, this piano really doesn't have any right to have that type of a bell-like tone in that upper mid range. And it's just beautiful. So if you're somebody who really enjoys that tone, but didn't feel like it was in your price range, well, wrong. And give this piano a play before dismissing it simply because of its height. Because the biggest deficit that shorter uprights normally have is of course in the bass. And the bass on the V112 is even more surprising than the mid-range. Listen to this. It reminds me tremendously of the Prezina 112s and, and 111s that you know first started rolling out 10, 15 years ago. And, and their whole thing was, of course, they had this floating soundboard. And the 112 had just this crazy thunderous bass. And it sort of pushed a few other manufacturers to experiment with scale designs that really moved the bass bridge a lot closer to the edge of the soundboard. Um, now, some of those were total fails, but where I think the, one, the V112 on the Hoffman has uh, excelled is because they have chosen to go with a, a, a much more premium soundboard than normally would get on this uh, type of a price range, that soundboard uh, stays clearer and it doesn't take as much energy to activate. Uh, and so they can move that bass bridge a little closer to the edge. And because of that, they're getting a much longer bass string on this piano than your average, well, way longer than an average 44 or 45 inch upright. And so you're getting a huge benefit down in the lower end with, with really clear, uh, extremely strong bass tone. Uh, and then you've got this lovely bell-like tone in the middle. which is a distinctly European characteristic. You just don't get that type of uh, attack, that type of um, sort of immediate response typically out of uh, Japanese instruments. Yeah, it puts out a lot of sound. So despite its stature, you're not really experiencing much of a dynamic range loss. You're experiencing virtually no loss of clarity in the bass. And in a lot of ways, you're getting a bit more projection and clarity in your mid and upper mid range than you normally would out of a taller instrument of a similar price range. So those are all very strong arguments to put this on a list if your budget range is consistent with a U3 or a K500, but for whatever reason, those two instruments just aren't doing it for you musically and you'd like a meaningful alternative. The V112 has been very popular for us for exactly that reason. We still uh, certainly have plenty of people that are major fans of the Japanese product. They love the action. They love how even the sound is. They love the warmth of those instruments. But for people who are either looking for uh, you know, a, just a different sound, it just doesn't do it for them, this V112 has turned out to be a bit of a shining star. Um, the action on the 112 uh, has its limitations. I think they've regulated it about as best you can, um, and I think that it has a fantastic amount of control in your lower dynamic range, and it's very easy to express across really a very wide range um, of playing styles uh, and dynamic outputs. I think where you start to uh, experience a little bit of limitation because of its size uh, is the repetition speed when you're playing a little bit more aggressively. If you can keep it staccato so you're allowing the key to fully reset, there's not an issue, but you do need to get completely off the key to get a nice fresh repetition speed. So I could see some classical repertoire um, being a little bit tight to get happening on this instrument, but that's a fairly small percentage of the people who you know, buy pianos. I mean, I would love to be able to say that I've got all of Chopin's etudes completely under my fingertips. I don't, uh, but some of you do. Uh, and so this is not the piano for you, but for everybody who uh, is you know, enjoying piano at a professional level, all the way up to a professional level, um, in either a, a jazz setting, a popular setting, 
or even um, more just a, a um, romantic classical setting rather than something that's a little more uh, precision based, you're going to love this instrument. So there's there's there, you know very wide audience who's who uh, I think is going to find this instrument quite satisfying. Um, so the slightly shorter key stick um, and and obviously the the tighter geometry. Uh, it does have a few technical limitations, as we've just said, but the tone that you're getting off of the custom Beckstein hammer, immaculate, like I said, great bell-like tone through your mid-range and upper mid-range. Uh, the treble is super clear, not quite as complex as what you start to get on the Academy Becksteins, um, but the bass down uh, here is just su su shocking, surprising, shocking. I was trying to say both those words at the same time. Just no right to sound that good down in those lower uh, two octaves. The V112 uh, comes in a cabinet which is fairly traditional. You've got nice rounded gables there. Uh, this folds down. You've got, uh, it's not the widest music desk that I've seen, but it is fairly wide. Uh, certainly you, easy to get a four pager uh, on there. Um, and the fit and finish of the instrument, just like every other Beckstein product that's coming out of either their German or their Czech factory, uh, is top notch. The polyester is perfect, the gloss finish is perfect, uh, and technically speaking, uh, there's just really nothing that ever uh, has to be addressed when we uncrate these. You know, just a little bit of voicing sometimes to suit, um, but they come out perfectly in tune. And, uh, you know, Beckstein sh always ships them at about 441, so sometimes we leave a little bit higher. Um, uh, obviously, 440 is more of the North American uh, norm. So, uh, I hope that you've really enjoyed a quick peek at this Vision 112. Uh, a piano entirely deserving of your attention, as I said, uh, for anybody who is looking at an upright instrument in kind of the 10,000-ish U.S. Uh, range. Uh, j just uh, lots to love about this little guy. So if it's the first time that you're visiting the channel, we would really appreciate if you did subscribe and hit that notification bell. We're always making new videos, and for people who are a big fan of the piano world uh, or, or enjoy the videos or are definitely uh, in the market and shopping and using these, um, as uh, resource materials, uh, you're going to get notified every single time we bring out a new one, and we're doing that several times per week every single week. So thank you so much for joining us. My name is Stu Harrison. This has been Miriam Piano's YouTube channel, and hopefully we see you back for more videos shortly. Sun is right.